Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm just going to take a second and I'm going to load our video and our comments. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. I'll give everyone a few minutes to come in and we'll get right into it. I'm super excited for today's video. I want to apologize, everyone. I'm so sorry. Um, I've been... I was sick. We had crazy weather. We had a great Christmas holiday. And I'm so happy to finally be back. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for joining, love. I'm so happy to be back. Last week I had to cancel. We had really bad weather. And we have more coming this week. I'm just happy that my internet is cooperating this morning. Aw, oh, thank you. Hi, Bethany. Thanks for joining. I'm going to give everyone a minute to come in. I'm going to do a quick flip through of my new digital kit. This is called um, Grungy Mixed Media Backgrounds Kit 1. And so it's just collective um, backgrounds. It's very collective. It's shabby chic, vintage grunge. And um, it has some like rusty elements, patina elements. Um, it has shabby chic elements. And it's all kind of taken to my mixed media grungy place. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys. It's 18 pages created in 300 DPI. And you can find it in my shop at Fifi's Digital Des Designs on Etsy. Hi, Danny. Thanks for joining. And we're going to start a super fun project today. And I will get right into that. So first, I want to walk you guys through this this kit really quickly. So this is the first page. So I've done um, several elements here. I've got some botanicals. I've got some script. I've got some floral kind of thing going on there. But the overall theme of this page is like vintage grunge. It's um, got the rusty patina look going throughout the entire page. And it's great because um, when I designed this kit, um, I'm using this for my inspiration wall. So that's where my inspiration came from to create the kit. But at the same time, um, not only is it great for like a collage that you can use on a big scale on your wall in your craft room or your studio, but you can also rip and tear it different ways. Um, even when you fold it in half, you're going to get bits and pieces of the elements. So, I mean, you can use the pages as is like this, or you can rip and tear them for your collage projects, for your journals, or your mixed media projects. So it's just so much fun. So that's the first page. And this one here, um, Inspire Create. So again, when you fold it, you're going to get different elements here and there, or you can rip them and tear it for collaging. Um, it'll make great envelopes, all kinds of things. Um, one of the ladies um, that did a design team project for me, she did um, she did um, a vase with it. So it was just amazing how she's how she's incorporated some of these pages. And it was amazing too because a lot of a lot of my designers either took it to a, the grungy place or they took it to the shabby chic place. So that was the fun thing about this kit. It has so many different elements and it all just kind of goes together. And this is one of my favorites too. It has the it has um a rose in the background and it has some vintage elements and then it's also kind of shabby chic because you could take it um, to a shabby chic place where you add lace and different things or you could take it to, to more of a grungy place where you're adding steampunk and Tim Holtz elements. So they are really versatile and you'll be able to um, do all kinds of things. This is one of my favorites here. I think that's the right way. Yep. But again, you can turn this this way. You can turn this this way. And there's so many different ways that you can use these pages. So there's no right or wrong way. So it's got some floral elements. And then again, it has the, I've taken, if you guys can see, some of the same similar elements. But I've taken it to a shabby chic place. So I'm really excited to show this with you guys. It has script. I'm not sure if this is capturing all the details in my background. But I have mixed media here. And I have mixed media here. And I have some florals that I've incorporated and different things. And, um... Yeah, and for anyone asking, I design most of my stuff from scratch in Photoshop. So it's a lot of fun. Now, the difference between this page and this page is I have this more um, to the right-hand side. So as you can see, when you flip it in half, you're going to get more of just this element on this side. And you're going to get that full element on that side. But then what I wanted to do was move it so it's more centered. So then when we flip it in half for our page... We're going to get an element like this and an element like that. So it's still, it's two completely different things, 
But then again, on my full scale wall, I've taken the two elements like this and I've put them together. So when I've done them like that, I've continued the pattern like this across my wall. So again, when I start collaging and putting my work up in different things, I'm going to get elements that are just um, full scale and larger, if you guys can see. Or the other thing is to, yeah, add them, add them kind of like this. So that's what I've done with my wall. So I just wanted to share that. That's the next two pages. Okay. And then we have this one here. This one is um, got some architecture here. It has what reminds me of um, a typewriter, like your typewriter numbers. And then I've done um, an element where I've gone with um, like a map. And then I have more architectural elements on the other side. So it's just a lot of fun. And I have a number here, 6048, just a random number I generated. There we go. Again, that way. And this way and it has a lot of the rusty patina sort of elements so this was super fun so again i've got some pages that are really vintage and some that are really grungy and it, and then that's what i've done with this one too so i've done my my grungy but then i've pulled in shabby chic elements so i have this one here um with the with the rose um ephemera piece i've done the typewriter and i pulled in some lighter if you guys can see, I've got some lighter, um, sort of shabby chic elements that are popping forward. So I'm really happy with that. And that's what I like, guys. I like full three-dimensional backgrounds that pop. And that's what I do, guys. I kind of um, envision what I want to work with when I'm designing a kit. So I just wanted to share that. So this is based on um, kind of my perspective of what I want to use when I'm... Um, building my journals and my mixed media projects. So I've chosen three words for this year and their journey, perspective, and reflection. So basically I'm reflecting on 2022. I'm focused on my journey, my mixed media journey, and um, putting everything into perspective in terms of um, I've spent the last um, two months reorganizing my craft room and my, my studio room where I work. So um, <laughs> it's really put into perspective that I have way too much stuff. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that and just, um, you know, maybe managing my time better. That's one of my goals for 2023. Um, and just focusing on my art journey. So I just wanted to share that. So that's kind of where these words came from. I have this amazing little, um, background here with bricks and it's all rusty patina. And then it's got almost some fall elements here. And then my mixed media, and I put some botanicals in there, and then I did the words, yeah, over, um, like a steampunk clock, but I've also added some shabby chic elements. So I just wanted to share that. And then over here, I've gone back to the shabby chic sort of element, and I've done them like this. So here's the first one, like this, and then these two can kind of, you could overlap them like this on your sharing wall, like on your um, inspiration wall, like what I've done. Or you can have them right like that, like what I've done. And it just continues that same element. And again, it just gives you two different perspectives in your journal. Like this, like this. And then there's two of them. So you can separate them if you're doing a three signature journal. Because these will go with just about anything. Not just um, my future kits coming. Because um, that's kind of where this is inspired, guys. These are just backgrounds that I'm going to be building on later. So there's going to be more kits and more things that are all going to go with these pages. But I mean, they'll go with anything, right? any um, shabby chic kit, I'm sure, though. And that's the great thing, too. You know, when we buy these kits and things, we can mix and match them. So that's the other fun thing. And um, I'm doing some collaboration projects this year as well. So I'm going to show you guys how um, you can blend kits together from different designers. So it's a lot of fun. So this one here is, um, this has more um, mixed media elements than grungy elements, if that makes sense. So I have a little bit of shabby chic going here, but I've added that beautiful turquoise and I've got like a lavender kind of color going and then I popped it with a piece of lavender. So I really love how these ones turned out. And I've done a couple of them similar, so they all kind of go. So again, we have it like this and I really love how that turned out with the music notes and um, that shabby chic sort of element and mixed media. So we have this one. And then we have this one here with the vintage lady at the side. And we have um, mint. 
in this corner like that and our mint so they, they all go together and then this one here again with the lavender on this side but um, if you guys can see I've done this different so I've added a different element here so I have um, some I faded in some um, music notes oh sorry guys and then I have the vintage lady at the side I have her here so that's how I've done that so it goes like this and it goes like that and just for a little uh, teaser I, w I have um, some Egyptian art that I've made and I am going to be doing a full-on Egyptian kit this year so I've done um, I, I want to do some travel kits so the first one that I've done is Paris so I want to do like London, I want to do ancient Egypt, I have a whole list of places and destinations that I'd like to make kits for. And one of them is ancient Egypt. And I'm very much inspired by the work, um, the craftsmanship, and all the things that go along with um, the art and architecture from ancient times. So it's very inspiring to me, so that's why I created um, two pages that really reflect that. And I'm able to collage over them with my personal art that's kind of Egyptian style. So that's why I've done these. So this one here is Egyptian hieroglyphics. And I've kind of faded it out kind of thing to make it look like old textile. So that was kind of the look I was going for there. And then over here I have the scarab elements and then I have... Um, like a mixed media sort of element and then I have gold from um, one of the symbols that I used with the snake so I just wanted to show that and again over a very grungy background kind of like grungy same with the patina I pulled that in okay. and then the next one is the same sort of elements so I've done that over here and I've just taken like um, a rusty mixed media approach with this one with the music notes so basically you're going to have the ancient Egyptian element here and then over here you just have this rusted sort of um, grungy um, but it's also like again you can take this to a shabby chic place because it's not it's not like steampunk looking if that makes sense you could take like a, a photo of a, vin of a vintage lady add your lace and it's still gonna you can still take that to um, a shabby chic place so I just wanted to show that. And again, you can rip and you can tear these any way that you like. Because in all of my pages, they're three-dimensional. And you're going to be able to get different elements based on whatever piece that you want to use. So I just wanted to show that. It's just really versatile. And there's so many different things that you can use. I think this is going to be one of my favorites for a very long time. So I just wanted to show that. And it's going to go with like my vintage field notes kit. It's going to go with... Um, I have some steampunk kits coming up. I'm going to do a kit on ancient Egypt. I want to do some more shabby chic work. So it's all going to kind of tie in later. So this is just a super fun um, collection of some random backgrounds that I made. So same with this one here. This has letters all in the background. And then I have the um, primroses. And then I have over here some vintage, um, vintage grungy um elements and some book pages and different things and music notes so you, so and then I have a hint of green here which I really loved like um it's almost like a a lighter just a slight lighter version of um forest moss and that's one of my favorite colors so I wanted to kind of make it pop here so that's why I did that and then um so you have this element here and then you have the, the botanical on this side so again if you wanted to just do vintage, you could use this side. Or if you wanted to do just grungy, you could use that side. And I've done multiples. So, like, this has um, multiples for layering. So the reason why I've done this, guys, is because I love to do these projects where you're attaching... If you guys can see this. Where you're attaching um, your pages like this. And you're creating, like, a pocket. Or you're creating like one of those, um, like this way, one of those tiered um, pockets and different things. So this is another option, guys, where you're taking it and you're creating your slot pockets or you're creating um, dimensional tags or some kind of dimensional page where you want it to flip out different ways. So I just wanted to show that. So any of your layering elements, you can get it like this. 
and again the same kind of thing guys you're layering elements like that so here's the final page it's this one here with the the beautiful florals and then again the one with the primroses and then the last one has a little bit of steampunk and the only difference between these three is I added a key over here so I just wanted to share that so it's kind of like again you could have your elements like this and like that when you're like you know making like your pockets and it's the same kind of thing here so you could have this you could have this one here which kind of looks like a continuation hiding the steampunk and you could do something like that where you have like your your roses like that so it's a perfect way to make like like a series of pockets and you could cut this different ways and layer it up so that's kind of what how why I designed um, these pages to be like in threes and similar so that you can use them together to make your scrap like your um, your junk journal elements um, by using the same like family of papers so I just wanted to share that that's why I've done it this way it's not that I'm purposefully repeating myself it's that I wanted to give it some some um, elements that you can build on so I just wanted to share that I think that was the right order this one yeah this one wrong way sorry guys this one there we go this one and that one there so that's 18 pages they're created in 300 dpi and they're in my shop these digital designs what i'm going to do today guys i'm going to go through all the comments after the video and i'm going to write down everyone's names who was watching and make that so everybody leave me a comment and everyone who's commented on this video, your name's going to go into a draw. And for next week, I'm going to draw. That'll be the first thing we do. I'm drawing three names out of everyone that's been watching. And um, you'll get a free kit. So I just wanted to share that. So I'll give three of these away to um, whoever's watching. So now, the next thing I want to do is I want to show you guys our next project. And I'm super excited because this is one of my absolute favorite things to make so this here is a file folder journal it is traveler's notebook size the actual journal measures um, it is eight inches high and it is four inches across and that's four inches to here so this um, little tab here which is a faux tab that I attached this gives you an extra I would say quarter of an inch so the whole thing would on this side would measure um, four and a quarter and then again, I have my steampunk, you guys know me and my Tim Holtz stuff. So my clock hands move. I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So my clock hands move and I have, um, I'm going to walk you through the journal. So I have a one inch spine that has an elastic, um, closure. So again, you can have it anytime that you want. So it's timeless. Um, I've used stamping and I've used again, my file folders. I have two tags up here, and I've done stamping with and stenciling with my Tim Holtz stamps and stencils. So this is called a double pocket, because it's a pocket at the back and a pocket at the front. We're going to open it. And I want to make sure that I'm completely in frame, and you guys can see. And I might even lift you up a little bit. That might be better. There we go. So you guys can see better. Okay, so this is where the first panel is on the inside. I've done this all in Tim Holtz paper. And then here we have a tag that I've stenciled. And I kept it sort of plain. This here is um, vellum. So I just wanted to share that. I've used vellum paper. And I've used Tim Holtz dies and die cuts and done different elements. And that's one of his botan uh, botanicals. And this side here, and that's all Tim Holtz paper. This one here too. And you flip it open. And then here on this panel, we have two um, pockets that I've done with embossing folders. And I've done um, Tim Holtz pocket cards in here. Um, this one here opens like this, and flips down and opens up like that. The top part here, if you guys can see this, here we go. That's for a tag here, because that's an envelope. And then you can add um, some sort of element here that's like a booklet or a tablet or some sort of thing like that. And then that closes back down. I've used a frame on my Cricut machine. And then let me spin 
it around like that. Tim Holtz Botanicals. Script stamping from Tim Holtz Stamps. This is the center portion here where, as you guys can see, we have this on an elastic. So here's the center journal on an elastic. I have coffee dyed my paper. So it's a very blank journal. Doesn't have a kit. So this is another idea, guys, that you can do if you don't have digital kits. So this is just coffee dyed paper. And in here I've done um, cardstock double-sided from Tim Holtz. I believe that was one of his ledger um, paper collections. And then this is one of my... Um, this is one of my... Um, um, projects I love to do with envelopes where I'm doing a combination of stenciling, stamping, and, and embossing. And then I've, I've coffee dyed it. So that's how I've gotten it, that color. And then, yeah, so I have one of my, mine here. And then flipping through to the back. So this is the center part where our journal sits. So this flips like this, that flips over. And then we're at the last portion of the journal. And then it's here, again, Tim Holtz stamps, die cuts. I took some dimensional paint and I painted um, one of his um, spring dies. And then again here, I did another tag here with um, the Distress Oxides with, um, with his flourish symbols, like his flourish stencils. And um, that's botanicals and then his uh, crochet dies. And then when we open it here, we have an element here that's a pocket. In this side, what I've done, and again, everything kind of moves and it's three-dimensional because everything's on brads. And I'm going to show you guys how to make some of these closures and different things that I like to use. So this is my favorite way to use my die cuts. So again, I'm just going to, I've used the string to use that as a closure. And then this part here opens, and this is a pocket. So I could take my cards, guys, and use them like this here as a pocket. So if you guys can see that's a little pocket there. And these again, they're Tim Holtz um, pocket cards. So again, and I just use them like this as a tuck, like that. So either way that works. And then here we go. And you just wrap it around a couple of times and then let it hang. So that's another thing too, and you can use it like as an element where it's kind of sitting down like this and hanging out your book. You can do that too because that kind of makes a nice little element there. So again, over here, um, I have used one of Tim Holtz um, film strip dies, and I have um, a little tag I did stenciling and one of his pocket cards. So it's just really cute. And that's one of the ones um, with the birds on it. And the same thing. So this holds your envelope flap down. And then when you flip it up, I have, um, in both, I have more pocket cards in there. So I just wanted to share that. So they are functioning envelopes. And then I just slide these back down to keep them closed. There we go. And this is a slot pocket. So then I could do the same thing, guys, and use a really long tag because it goes right to the bottom. And I could put something in there, too. And I've reinforced it so it has, um, it's able to take lots of sliding in and sliding out in there. And then this here on this side, if you guys can see, is an envelope. It's one of my favorite envelopes, as I mentioned to you. And then I've completely covered my envelope and I've matted it in... Um, in uh, scrapbooking paper and then I have a folio that goes in there so I've used um, a piece of crochet lace on my tr on my spine and it's a little folio so it goes like this so I can use it as journaling space and it opens like this and I have individual little slot pockets here so I could take like um, here we'll go back one here we go grab one of the tags just to show you guys so you can put tags all throughout here. I didn't want to bulk it up. I just kept it blank. But each of these works as um, as individual pocket space all the way down. I think I've done uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six slot pockets, and then this one here is a um, 
that's a shallow pocket. So you can put some little tickets or some, some things in there. So it's a great little um, Happy Meal idea too, right? And then this here you can use as ledger. You could mount a photo there. You could do anything. And then when you open it, um, this part here is a pocket. This part here, there we go, is a pocket. And this part here is a pocket. And I love how I did that with, um, like I love how it turned out where I used the one piece of Tim Holtz paper. So same kind of idea like I just showed you where you can piece together elements of two different pages or a page and then have it continue um, across um, your pockets. So that was the other sort of idea that I had when I was designing this kit. So I just wanted to share that. So you can get the same sort of elements across different pockets and different elements. Um, so that's why I created the multiple pages. So you can get that element even if you don't have them on the same page. So if you've already used, um, like so you can get the repeat elements is, is where I'm kind of going with that. And same thing over here, this is all pockets on that side as well. So it gives you lots and lots of um, um, space to tuck things. And then it goes like that. And um, it's up to you, you can do it like this or like that. And it goes back into the pocket here. And then again here, this is the very, um, so the center of the journal essentially is um, the journal. And then over here we have pockets. So th this is like big pockets here. I've done um, one of the um, file folder elements here. And I've got some random, um, these are all journaling cards from Tim Holtz from his pocket cards set. They kind of went with this project. And then these ones here I have in this one. And then I made this tag with one of his botanicals. So just a lot of fun and um, a great way to use your to use your um your Tim Holtz stuff. So that's what I what I did with this one. So essentially we're going to create another one of these. And we're gonna do mixed media and all kinds of different things. So again, that's where that little pocket is at the back. So you can have that. Hanging down, you could attach a charm to it if you want to. There's so many things that you can do. And when you're all done, it's a sturdy little book. And it um, has that cute uh, traveler's notebook um, element. So I just wanted to share that. So a traveler's notebook is smaller. It's eight inches high, and it's about four, four and a quarter wide. So I just wanted to share that. So this is what we're going to be making. So today we're going to get out a file folder. And I want to share... Um, so the, the, this project right here, um, this is one of my favorite ones to do, and this is from Artines. And so she did a Junk in the Trunk series on YouTube, and that's where I had followed her instructions how to do this. I added some of my own elements, but essentially a lot of these elements and things are hers. So this one that we do is going to be different, but I do like the construction. So out of all the file folders that I've made, this one, like for a, if you're doing a large journal that you want to put, um, you want to put that signature like this into, um, this is my favorite method because her, the way she does it and shows how to do it, which is, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Um, she leaves enough room for all your flips and your flaps so that we're not interfering with anything closing. So I just wanted to share that. So her, like her, um, video is the best that I found. So that's why I'm using, um, her method as inspiration for, um, how we're going to put it together. Cause it's the best method I, that I've found. So now what I want to do, but we're going to do all of our own elements and I have all of, um, Tim's chapter, uh, I believe chapter two dies. Um, from last year. So they're all of his, like, his specimen card, his envelope um, journals, and all that sort of thing. Like, for um, his envelopes for um, for journals, and um, there's, like, four or five sets to that. So I'm really excited, and that's what I want to use for this journal, is most of my Sizzix dies and different things. And I want to show you guys some three-dimensional elements and how we get there. So essentially, I'm going to use a file folder. So when we fold it out, it's like this. This is a legal size in Canada. So this one's quite big. It measures um, 14 and a quarter, I want to say. Yeah, 14 and a half. Um, probably by 24. Yeah, 12. 
maybe even 14 or 15, I'm not sure. But um, it's quite large, and it's bigger than the standard. And so if you don't have these in the UK, um, I've, I've heard that you guys can't get these in the UK, the ones like this. Um, you can use the kind that um, hang in your file folder cabinet, like your filing cabinet. So you can use those kind of ones that, that are still in half, but they're um, doubled over and they have that metal thing. Just cut that portion off of the metal thing and you can use that same sort of um, file, like file folder feeling um, thick manila um, as your base. Um, the other thing that you can do is glue, or sorry, is um, use double sided tape or um, not double sided tape, sorry, um, washi tape. And you can um, hinge together two pieces of cardstock to get this same shape. So if you hinge two pieces of cardstock together, you're going to get that same motion. So I just wanted to show that. That's some alternatives that you can do. Um, so what we want to do is we want to put our I want to put our file folder in here, and we're going to score. So I'm going to take a second, and I'm going to punch in the measurements into the um the comment section so it's easier for for everybody as i go so our first score is going to be at three and three quarters the second one is going to be at four inches And then the next score mark is going to be at eight inches. Okay, so we're going to do that first. So I'm just going to punch that into here so you guys have that. So it's going to be at three inches, sorry, three and three quarters of an inch, four inches, and eight inches. So the first one is going to be three and three quarters, which is right here. So this is going to, so we want to make sure that this is tight to here. Okay, so three and three quarters of an inch. Okay, right here. So that's our first score mark. Okay. And then four inches. So if you guys can see, I just made myself a little gusset. So the reason why I want that tiny little gusset here is so that I have enough space to fold. When I go to fold this, I can fold it so that I have that little space so that I can build up whatever's going to be on that first panel and on that back panel without worrying about it affecting my closure. So I just wanted to mention that. So there we go. We've done it like that. So that's on the four, uh, the three and three quarter of an inch mark. And then it's on your four inch. And then the next one is at eight, which is right here. Your eight inch mark, which is right here. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to fold that here on the eight inch mark. There we go. So that's right here. And then I'm going to move this over here, right tight to, yeah, right tight to here, okay? So then when we have our 8-inch mark, have I done that right? No, guys, sorry. We're going to open it. We're opening it up. All right, let's try that again. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. We're going to take our file folder. We're going to open the whole thing up like this. We're going to rotate it. That's right. Sorry, guys. I'm like, why does it not look right? This, this is why. All right, let's try that again. Three. It's been a while. Three and three quarters of an inch. Right down to here. Okay. Then we have our... Yeah. Sorry, no. Three and three quarters. That's okay. Right here three and three quarters. Then we have our four inch. That's what we want to do. 
Here we go, guys. So now we are making our score line here. So this is the first one. Right here. All the way down. There we go. First panel. It's just awkward because it's so big. Sorry, guys. That just took me a hot minute. <laughs> um, I haven't made these in about mm, three years, I think. Yeah. But they're a lot of fun. The next one. So that's where our gusset is right here, guys. So that's going to create our... Um, there we go. That's going to create that little... See? If you guys can see that. Yep. In Canada and the United States, yeah, these are uh, legal size. They come in standard and they come in legal. So standard is um, smaller than legal. Legal is bigger. Here we go. And that creates our little gusset here. That's right. Okay. Because we're going to use this bottom one to flip it up. If you guys can see that, it's flaps. That's right. Sorry, guys. So then that was our four. So our three, three and three quarters and our four inch mark here. Three and three quarters, four inches. Then we're going to go to um, eight inches. So our eight inch mark, yes. And this is perfect, guys. So see, this is where I was confused. The eight inch mark is the first part of our file folder and that's how you know you're right because that's this part here guys where the bottom is because if you can see on your file folder um they have that spot already um pre-creased for you so your file folder can um hold like a stack of papers if that makes sense so this is like this is where your one inch spine is going to be so I just wanted to share that. This is where the one inch spine is going to be on the file folder. So then that is, oops, sorry guys. That is at the eight inch mark here. And then it's one inch. So that then that's the nine inch mark. Okay. And then what I want to do is fold, um, oh, I want to fold this right to here. So I'm going to put this over right to here now like this. Okay. So this is like tight to here on that side. And then I'm going to measure from here out. Here we go. So we have our eight inch mark and then our one inch spine. And then, so when we take our eight inch, like we're our eight and our nine inches here, we're taking it to the corner. And then from here, we're going to measure out. So the next measurement after the, um, the eight inches is four and three quarters and five inches. Score at four and three quarters and five inch mark. Okay, so four and three quarters, which is here. Okay. Just here. And then again, we're creating that gusset at five inches. So there's the next one. There's the next one here. Yeah. Four and three quarters and five. Perfect. So then this gives us our last panel. So essentially now what we've done, when we go to fold all of these, we have this one here. We have our spine for the center here. So again, we are not interfering here at all when we have our two fold lines. And then we have that gusset here on this side, here, and on this side. So we're just going to crease that and crease this. So essentially, guys, our book then looks like that. And this is the perfect fold spot for it, like that. So that's how it looks, like this and like that. Now what we want to do is with the bottom. All right, so I'm going to move the scoreboard. We are done with the scoreboard. And we're going to want to figure out where our elements are. Here we go. So this is a lot of fun. Um, so now you're, you're going to need a pencil. And I can kind of refer to the other one too. So I know that the first one you guys can see this we take our panel off of the first one the second one we can make like some kind of um I do like this element here so I'm going to show you guys how to do that 
So we will use this element, but I'm going to change it up as to how it's going to open in different things. And um, we're going to use the pockets in the middle. And we're going to take off, yeah, we're going to take off the other one. So I'm going to um, essentially, sorry guys, essentially we're going to, pencil, there we go. So we're going to remove this, we're going to cut it, we're going to leave this one, we're going to leave this one, and we're going to remove it, okay? So I just wanted to let you know, so it's minus, plus, plus, minus. For this, then, so we've decided that this is the bottom of our file folder right here at the bottom, so that's going to measure eight, the eight inches. So I'm just going to show you guys that right here. Eight inches if you guys can see so we're perfect so we're gonna remove this first panel the entire thing okay. so we're going to cut this up to the bottom line like this and we're going to cut it off so the first one, we do not want a pocket. We just want our panel like that. And I'm going to save this because as you guys can see, we've scored that perfectly. And that can be like a little window flap or something um, with some kind of an, an element like this, guys. So see, you can make like a little, a little flipper flap. So it's great to hang on to that. So now what I want to do... So this is our panel one. I want to come in here and I just, so I'm going to close this right to this part here because that's where our gusset is. And I want to give this a little taper across the top, just a tiny bit, just so that it's not going to interfere with my closure. So I'm going to go ahead and taper this down just ever so slightly. I'm only going to take off like a hair. I don't want to, there, and so as you guys can see when I flip this up, because I've taken off that hair, this is now going to sit perfectly here, so, I, sorry guys, so this is coming up like this, I've taken off that hair, and then this is going to now fold over perfectly if you guys can see so it does not you have to leave an eighth of an inch gap between um between your your um pocket and the side of your fold line and the reason is is so that you can get that perfect um fold where it's not going to interfere with your opening and closing of the book so I just wanted to share that. That's why I've done that. And then I don't want this whole bulky thing. Um, actually, what I can do is just put this in my paper trimmer like this. Uh, maybe I... No, I can't right now yet. I will do that, just not yet. So I've done the first one. Let's do the last one because we know we're taking it off. Here we go. So same thing. I'm going to um, cut it like this right along the bottom here yeah right along here there we go okay and then I'm gonna cut right along here like that even so then we have our back and our front panel without that bottom pocket and same thing, I can take this and I can use this for a separate element. And again, I've scored along here. And we can just, I've scored half of it. But anyways, um, we can use that as like a little pocket or a gusset or something later. So I'll put that with the other one. So now we have our two elements here. So this is now where I want to take my paper trimmer. And I want to put this in. And it doesn't matter what way I put it in. I just want to figure out approximately how deep I want these pockets. Which isn't overly deep. 
I'm going to put this at the um, at the four inch mark. So if you guys can see this up in the corner right here, right here, I've got the four inch mark and I'm going to line it with the bottom of my pocket. So I've essentially put my, my file folder project in this way and the pockets are here. If that makes sense. I've lined this up with the four inch mark. So it should give me enough of a pocket where it's going to probably come to about here. And then I want to, um, yeah, line it up with the four inch mark here. Make sure we're nice and straight. And then I'm going to come in here and just give that a trim like this. So again, I have a piece that looks like this. If you guys can see that. And then there's our pocket. Now the other thing that, so that's a quick way to do it. My pockets are perfect and they're symmetrical. So I just wanted to show that. The other thing that I can do is now we want to remove that one inch spine. So we want our pocket to come up like this on two sides, but we do not need that one inch spine because this is where we're going to have to reinforce it, put our eyelets in and add our string, but we don't want it to um, interfere with our pockets. So I'm going to remove that just right like this. Right here. Okay, like that. And I'm going to remove it right here. Right along here. And again, I can use this as a gusset for something else, so I'm not going to throw this out. I'm just going to put it to the side and in with my scraps. This one here. Okay. So then we have two pockets that look like this. So now, as you guys can see, there we go. Our pockets are going to fold up like this. So I want to do the same thing here. So the only one tapered so far is this side here, which is adjacent and perfect with this side. So I want to do the same thing here, guys, on the other side. I want to make sure this is um, has an eighth of an inch um, cut so it's not interfering with our spine here or here. And I want to cut this one an eighth of an inch so that it's not interfering with our fold line there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you just have to literally guys just remove a small strip it's not um a lot there we go so this is the construction that Archie Mays teaches in her videos as well so I just wanted to share that that's where this inspiration came from for this because I have out of all the file folder projects that I've ever made this is the best method for making a file folder journal so I just wanted to share that and it ensures that none of your um, your flips and your flaps and your pockets or anything interferes with um, the actual construction of your journal. So I just wanted to share that. So if you guys can see this, when I go to fold my pockets up, I have an, in an eighth of an inch everywhere. So I can just show you. So this closes perfectly like this, which closes perfectly like this, which closes perfectly like this on the first and second gusset here. Yeah, so there's the one, and then we have to pull it back. There we go. This, yeah, for our second one here. Perfect, right like that. And then once we're like this, and then we're gonna close like that. And see, it's perfect. So then what she does too is adds a, um, like a faux file folder um, um, a piece. That, that she adds here to make it look like it's more of a like a file folder um, like how I've done it here like it's a faux one right coming like this you can do that you don't have to we're gonna add other elements where it's gonna add that anyway um, using Tim Holtz specimen dies so we're not gonna add that separate we're just gonna use the dies and do different things so I just wanted to share that so this is the basic construction of it and then I'm going to go ahead this week and I'm going to decorate it. So I'm going to spray it and I'm going to um, script stamp it just kind of like I've done this. So just it's just um, or you can coffee dye it however you'd like. Um, that's script stamping with Tim Holtz stamps and um, some coffee dyed. I think I coffee dyed the, um, the spine. And then we'll come back next week and we're going to make our spine. We're going to add our eyelets um, in here finish our pockets. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to do pockets or flaps, so I'm just going to, um, 
get a better uh, game plan for this one. We might just do two pockets to keep it simple to show you guys. And I can use that element for something else in another project. So I can, uh, we'll still show you guys, just maybe not with this one. Uh, we'll see. Oh, thank you so much, everyone. And I am, guys, I'm going to write down everyone's names and I'm going to do a giveaway. So, um, for next week, I'm going to have, um, here, guys, I have my cup. This is my giveaway cup right here. And I will have, um, a cup full of names for next week. And I will draw, um, three winners for my new digital kit and I'll send you guys the files, anyone who wins. So, super excited. And yeah, and we're going to make um, this cute little journal step by step together. So now that we have our construction, that's what we're going to do this week. We're going to get it all ready for the next steps. And then um, I'll show you. So you're going to need some kind of an eyelet setter. Um, if you don't have eyelets, that's okay. You can just punch your holes. You just have to be careful. So as you can see, I have eyelets set here and here. And then I have a, like, um, a, like almost like a jewelry cord or like a, a like a stretchy string. So that's essentially um, what, what that's made out of. And that's just going to hold um, our center of the journal here. If you guys can see that. And I'll show you how to do this too. Because this is the great thing about a traveler's notebook, guys. Then I can take my journal out of my book. This is just a one signature journal that I like to do simple and it's not even a pamphlet stitch i just do this fancy little um regular stitch in for these and see if you guys can see that i'll show you how to do this so, so, super simple and it holds it all together and it's in here and then you can pull your that's the great thing you can pull your journal out and then you can you know work on your journal because this is very blank for this project um i like a blank journal because then it gives your recipient or yourself all this room to do whatever you like later. It can be an art journal. It can be um, a junk journal. It can be whatever you want it to be. And all I've done is lightly coffee dye my pages. So I'm super excited to show you guys that. And um, then you just go right back to your center. And you can pull it out, work on it whenever you want. And then you just lift this and slide it back in. Cause it's all perfect and then it holds your journal like that so i'm super excited and i will walk through this step by step guys so i'm going to check my time and see where we're at right now oh let me see here yep i've got 953 So, yeah, that's what we're going to do for this week. Um, what I like to do if I'm going to coffee dye, I, I have a Keurig machine. And you don't have to have a Keurig machine. You can have, um, you can basically do anything that you, that you want. Um, you can use ground coffee. You can use instant coffee. You can do whatever you like. But what I like to do, um, and it's just my preferred method, I take a cup, just any cup, not this cup, just any, any regular um, coffee drinking cup out of my kitchen and I run a Keurig puck because I have a Keurig machine so if you have a Tassimo or whatever you have um, an espresso machine whatever you have um, I run it a second time so I'll run like my so like my coffee that I made this morning this afternoon if I want to do coffee dye I'll just go and turn my coffee maker back on and run a puck that I, that's been run ran through there an hour or two ago or whatever and then I have a coffee mixture, so I've just made my one cup of coffee um, from my old puck. And then I'll go and I'll take instant coffee, and I will add a teaspoon of it to that mixture to make it dark. You can also do this with tea, so basically make a tea, and it, but you don't add your milk sugar or anything. You just make it black. And then um, you come into your craft room, you bring your cup of tea, and you take like a paintbrush. It can be anything. Um, I just have this one randomly in front of me. Um, any of your paintbrushes, anything, something controlled. This is another good one for coffee dyeing. You know, just something small. And then you dip it into your coffee mixture and then you coffee dye it. And then I, you can use your, um, your heat it tool to dry it or you can let it air dry. 
and then you come back and you use more of your coffee mixture and you just do it a couple of times until you're happy with um, the result. Now, what I do like to do, though, because I like to make books that are archival, so I take a little bit of baking soda. This is important. If you're going to do coffee or tea dyeing, coffee and tea are acidic. So they will eat your paper over time. So it's not something that's going to be archival unless you add a little bit of baking soda to it. And by doing that, it takes down the acid. And so you're going to get this beautiful tea and coffee dye stain, but it's not going to disintegrate your papers, if that makes sense. So just wanted to share that. So that's my little, my little um, tidbit for that. Otherwise, your paper can become brittle. And I do. I just love, if you guys can hear that, the crunchy sort of feeling of it. It's just amazing. And I love coffee dyeing paper. Um, the other thing, if you're going to make a journal and you're going to send it overseas. So if I'm making a journal and I'm sending it from Canada to the United States or the UK, I will not add coffee dyed paper because for some reason it triggers the, the police dogs <laughs> at customs. Yeah, and I've had a couple of journals that arrived in a not so nice way uh, where all the coffee dyes, like all the coffee dyed paper has been ripped out of them. So I just wanted to share that. Um, so that's why I make fewer journals now with coffee dyed paper. It's all right if you're doing it for yourself, but if you're going to put it in the mail, I don't recommend coffee dyed paper. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, um, that little tidbit. So for this, I'm not going to add coffee dyed paper. I'm just going to use my digital kit. So I just wanted to share. So yeah, we're going to cover the whole thing, guys, in mixed media, and we will be back next week, and I'll show you guys the next steps. So we're going to add all of our um, our hardware first, and then we can start matting and decorating and, um, and adding to it. And um, any die cuts that you want to use, you get, can go ahead and cut them. I'm going to show you guys the Tim Holtz clock. I'm going to show you guys. So if you have um, one of his clocks, he's got a weathered clock, and then he's got this one here, too. Um, so if you want to follow along, you can cut one of those and if the gear dies, and if you can see that circle, that's just from a circle punch. So if you don't have the gears, um, and you have a brad, um, absolutely you can just die cut a couple of your, um, your, your punch circles, or if you have a different element that you want to use, feel free to use it. I'm using clock hands for this. Um, I showed you guys how to do that with the butterfly. So this time we're going to use the clock. Um, then um, we're going to add, like um, we're going to do those um, specimen elements and um, Tim's uh, po uh, postal um, sets from last year. So I'm really excited. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that, and I'll be back next week with a giveaway because I'll make a list of everyone's names. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a fabulous week and I'll see you back soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.